Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I am here today at Galerie de Mars in Paris, taking a look at a number of very interesting French rifles. And what we have today is an experimental rifle from the 1870s to 1880s. During this time, the French arsenal system, well, the French military, spent quite a lot of time looking at all sorts of different magazine systems. Basically, this was the, the heyday of the repeating rifle, which is to say a manually operated rifle that has some sort of magazine. And the French weren't alone in this. Everyone on the planet, every military power out there, was really interested in all these this just plethora of, of new repeating systems that were coming out. So the United States went through trials looking at dozens of different rifles. The French did the same. There were 40, at least 40, different systems that were tested by the French military or by the French arsenals during this time period. And they include basically every combination you can think of, of box magazines, gravity-fed hoppers, tube magazines, you name it. What we have here specifically is basically a version of the Gras uh, that has been adapted to use a Vetterli system. So uh, where the Lebel did use a, a tube magazine, that was the... Um, Kropacek style of tube magazine, the Kropacek patent, where this is more like a king's patent, um, which the Vetterli used, where you have a loading gate in the side instead of opening the bolt and loading the gun uh, through the top. So let me come in a little close, show you some details of the rifle, and also how that loading system worked. All right, so if we look at this up close, the receiver is substantially different from the Gras. So this isn't just a Gras that was converted to have um, this sort of Kingsgate Vetterli style of loading system. Our receiver markings here, we have Henry, um, which I believe is in fact the same Henry as the American lever action rifles. And then we have Manufacture du Saint-Étienne. So this was made by the Saint-Étienne arsenal based on uh, Henry patents. We have the H in a circle there, which is uh, Henry's kind of marking. Now normally we would expect on a standard military rifle to have a serial number and date and various information on the back of the barrel. This doesn't have any of that, although it does have what is clearly a Gras style of rear sight. Um, it is an 11 millimeter rifle. The exact caliber isn't uh, necessarily, well, isn't specified anywhere. I assume it is 11 millimeter Gras, but I could be wrong on that. It's interesting to note that the handguard and magazine tube are held in place by a cross bolt. This is not what would ultimately be used on, well, on the Kropaceks that the French uh, adopted or on the Lebel later on. Um, this is very reminiscent of what you would find on a black powder revolver, um, a Colt revolver, uh, holding the barrel assembly on. So this, again, this isn't just a conversion of an existing tube-fed gun. It is parallel but separate development. Now the way this would actually work is that, just like on a Swiss Vetterli, as long as this lifter is in the downward position, which means when the bolt is closed, you have an opening here that leads straight into the magazine tube, and you can push cartridges in one at a time. Now this does not have a gate covering that opening, uh, and it doesn't look like it was ever meant to, and that would certainly explain why a rifle like this would be rejected at trials. Um, however, it is clearly missing a lever that was here, which I believe would have told you when the magazine was actually full. Now, if we open this up, what would normally happen is when the bolt got to the end of travel, you would be able to pull back and lift this elevator. Um, and that's a system that was used on the Kropacek and uh, also later on the, the Lebel. On this one, you can see some of the parts in here are quite heavily pitted. This gun hasn't been restored, and I suspect it has a broken or frozen linkage inside. Um, unfortunately. But normally when you pull the bolt all the way back, that lifter comes up and presents a cartridge to feed into the barrel here. Uh, when that was in the up position, this loading gate would be cut off. You wouldn't be able to load it. Um, and then when you close the bolt, that pushes the lifter back down and opens this up for loading. So we have a floor plate here um, that would allow access to some of those parts. But again, this rifle hasn't been uh, restored or messed with by its owner. and I don't want to be the guy who tries to take that screw out and discovers that it's just going to shear off. So the muzzle end of the rifle is very much like the standard French military pattern. However, 
it has a clearing rod on the bottom. Typically that was not done on the, the French tube-fed guns, because, well, there's a magazine tube in the way. And in this case, what the designer did was mount the rod all the way, basically, below the stock, instead of in the stock. So where the French Karpaceks have rods on the side, this guy has it on the bottom. However, we still have a standard bayonet lug, which I presume fits a Gras bayonet. That would be the, the natural thing to use at this time. Unfortunately, I don't have any details for you on exactly when this model was made, or how its trials went. Ultimately, none of these systems were adopted. The French would adopt the Kropacek style uh, rifle, uh, made by Steyr in 1878, and then updated um, by the Châtellerault arsenal, and eventually turned into the Lebel rifle. But um, of all the dozens of different systems they tested, none proved to be really satisfactory for a variety of reasons. Some of them economical, some of them performance-based, um, you know, very much like the United States tested dozens of different systems, both for new repeating rifles and also for conversions of existing single-shot rifles into repeating systems, and none of them turned out to be uh, satisfactory. So anyway, this is a really cool example of just one of the very many systems that we're being experimented with. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. A big thanks to Gallery de Mars for giving me the opportunity to show this one to you. Thanks for watching.